So many things go wrong when you're starting a company, and often I think people ask, you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And you know, my answer to that question is don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the, the, um, the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make and not giving up. Right, and I mean, there, there are things every single year of Facebook's existence that could have killed us or made it so that it, it just seemed like moving forward and making a lot of progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn, and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running through the walls. A company is simply a group of people, um, and uh, as a leader of people, uh, you have to be a great listener, and you have to be a great motivator, uh, you have to uh, be very good at praising and looking for the best in people. Um, you know, people are no different from, from flowers. If you water flowers, they flourish. If you um, praise people, they flourish. And, um, and that's a critical attribute of, um, of a leader. I do think that one thing that's important is, especially if you're a founder or a technical founder, is to realize that you can't do everything. And even if you can, you shouldn't. You should find a great partner, no matter what it is that you're doing. Um, and you should look for someone who has very high intelligence, uh, very high energy, and very high integrity. And you need all three of those, and you can't compromise on any one of them. Otherwise, you'll end up with uh, either someone who's not smart, which is, does you no good, or someone who's not hardworking, which also does you no good, or the worst case is you end up with a smart, hardworking crook who ends up working against your interests. And uh, integrity is something that takes a lot of time spent with someone to figure out. And there are a lot of people from whom we can learn a lot, and I think like, you know, the one piece of advice is like, don't underestimate anyone you come across. Ever. Right. Like, whether they're, you know, uh, a, a blue collar worker waiting for the bus, or they're, you know, helping you at your, they're the server or bartender at the restaurant, or they're a lower ranking employee. I mean, the smartest leaders I've ever seen have always gone around the room and asked for everybody's opinion. Most startups that fail do it ultimately because they did not make something that people wanted. They made something that, um, you know, that they thought people would want, um, but they were either in denial about it, about, you know, whether it was actually any good, um, or somebody else came along and made something that people wanted even more. <laughs> the best piece of advice that, that we've figured out as we've been doing Courseware is not to, not to let other people distract what you're doing. There's always haters that say, your idea is stupid, this idea is never gonna work, um, don't even bother doing that because someone else is gonna do it before you do. And if we listened to all those, all that feedback that we were getting, all that negative feedback, we would never have built things. We would never have prototyped things. And that's how we really got to where we are. Like we saw things that we wanted to build, and we just went out and built them. And it turns out when you build stuff that you like to use, um, there's a good chance that there's thousands of other people that want to use it too. And so it's not just about doing focus groups. It's not just about you know double checking your vision. It really is about integrating this concept of testing our ideas rigorously throughout the product development process, throughout the marketing process, even as we scale up. But what you really need to do is think about what is the smallest possible test that I can run for this idea, for this concept, for this theory, get it out there, and get customers using it. Because your customers are going to be the ones to tell you if it's really working or not. What this all comes down to is doing something exceptional for your users, whether it's in community, whether it's in connection, or whether it's in design. This is our big advantage as a startup, is that we can actually get away with doing this. We can make this the core part of why we're doing business. I think you should be spending your money on, on, um, on teaching and, and sharing, and so that might mean hiring a writer or two, perhaps, instead of a marketing person. You know, and start writing and start getting people to listen to what you're saying. You can't talk about yourself all the time because no one's going to come back for that. We get to talk about things that are relevant to your industry or ideas that you have and start to build that audience up. The most important thing when you're working with people early is that you guys line up on, on what your goals are. Um, that's, that's really, that sounds really basic, but you can totally, it can be fine. You can want to build a small business um, that makes money and you don't have to go to an office every day. Or you can want to build a huge company. You can want to build Google. But I think you have to be really, really aligned on that. When you know, a lot of corporations have they might call them core values or guiding principles or so on, but the problem is usually they're very lofty sounding. They kind of read like a press release the marketing department put out. Uh, they sound just like their competitors and maybe you learn about it on day one of your job, but then it becomes this meaningless plaque on the lobby wall. Well, we wanted to come up with committable core values and by committable, meaning we're willing to hire or fire people based on those values, 
uh, completely independent of their actual job performance. The definition of values is they're the behaviors or principles that you religiously adhere to within your company. When I say religious, I mean that no amount of data will sway you in, from, from, um, from those principles. And the degree to which that you have the courage to um, maintain your conviction around those ideas is the degree to which you're going to be successful over the long term. So I kind of like half jokingly with, with a lot of people say that, you know, my job is basically like to be, to be the assistant for the rest of the company. Like my job is to, to make sure that like you have what you need, um, that it's, and, and basically you have everything you need to kick ass. Like that's my job. If you don't have that, then let me know because I'm not doing my job. You know, there are a lot of things that are outside of your control. Uh, a lot of external circumstances will depend, like determine the success of your idea, whether, you know, the market timing is right for this new kind of service. Um, or whether uh, people, you know, whether a customer, like the economy is right for, for, for your kind of service, right? Whether um, you meet the right people who will finance your company. Um, all, many, many external circumstances are like outside of your control and like, but will affect the outcome. And you, know, you have to like be okay with that. Another quality that I think is important is kind of being flexible-minded or open-minded. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a you know, vision for, for your idea or your product, but you need to be open to change it. The two things we really zero in on on people are um, you know, two things. They sound simple, they end up being very difficult. Um, courage and genius. Um, courage is the one we talk about a lot because it's the one that people can learn. Um, uh, you know, courage, courage, which is to say not giving up in the face of adversity, um, you know, just being absolutely determined to succeed, you know, is something that you can, you can like force yourself to do. It can be very painful. You can force yourself to do it. The genius part is a little bit hard to force yourself to do. Um, you know, courage without genius might not get you where you need to go, but genius without courage almost certainly won't. And I think the reality uh, is just, you know, not quite so glamorous. There's sort of a, there's an ugly side to uh, being an entrepreneur. Uh, and also just more importantly, uh, with what you're actually spending your time on is, is just a lot of hard work. Uh, Sam mentioned this, but you're basically just sitting at your desk, heads down, focused, um, answering customer, customer support emails, doing sales, figuring out hard engineering problems. Um, so it's really important that you kind of like go in with, with eyes wide open. Optimism has a place, but I think even more so for the first time entrepreneur, it, you need to be pragmatically pessimistic. What I mean by that is, you need to define all of the worst case scenarios in terms of financial loss, time loss, etc. Look at what you will learn if that happens and accept and come to terms with that before you ever start. If you don't do that and you go straight into battling the world, trying to conquer the world with rose-colored glasses on, the first time you hit a major hiccup, you're going to become really demoralized and you will quit. If you don't love it, you won't make it through the long period of pain that is inevitable. So. Uh, make sure that you take care of yourself during the process. Make sure that you take care of uh, your mental health, your physical health while you're doing it because it's a long road.